Good morning, old friend. Hey, bud, what's up today? Well, I'm, you know, probably should be doing other things, but you and I spent a little while discussing on our back channel this Delphi release of information from Friday, and we decided we'd do this call. So apparently this is what's important to us today, right? And apparently so. I mean, you know, because I, I got to see a little bit about that, but they were releasing from the murder sheets and, and that kind of stuff. <laughs> It's an interesting reading, you know, cast a few new little kind of questions there, but I don't know, man, how about you? You've read it and done a little more research on it. You were telling me you had a well, couple other ideas. Well, I don't know what kind of ideas I have, but I, what I do have is, is that I watched it with that, that's a group, uh, this this uh, YouTube guy, podcaster named Sleuth Intuition, and uh, I watched it live, you know, as he was playing it. I had not heard about it until then. So anyway, he did a live event where they went through and basically played the Murder Sheets podcast. And he, you know, pulled up the sheet and told everybody where to get it. So I went and downloaded it. Now, I haven't spent a lot of time reading it. My biggest impression from it came while it was being read by the Murder Sheet via the Sleuth Intuition uh, podcast. There was a lot of interesting things going on there. Uh, you know, it's, it's, it's really weird to me that that was leaked unintentionally I just believe that it was you know the story is is that this group the murder sheet I mean they've already done some very very good investigating and they've been probably finding found them a good connection someone to speak with within the uh, structure and uh, this is my opinion you know and then of course you know it's it seems to me that you know this this document was released to a public sphere, a public website for a short period of time. It just all seems very suspicious to me. This whole thing, you know, of course I saw another video and I cannot think of the name of it. I didn't watch it. I just saw the title of it. It's like, who is catfishing who? And I'm, I'm sitting there thinking that, you know, with this, this release of information, which seems very calculated. And I'm not, you know, like I said, I tried to give props to the, this murder sheet group because they've done some really good investigating. A lot of people have talked about it. That, like I said, that sleuth or sleuth intuition channel talked about it. I mean, they do some good work. I mean, they are very professional. You know, they're 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 real. You know, they're not just commenting on it. They're actually doing work. So, so I mean, I'm I'm glad that they got a break. But it just seems very convenient and weird. And it could be just that they caught it. I mean, it could be that you know a new person on the job or a person that's been there for a while or clicked the wrong button. And published it out to the site. Could have been an accident. But being that this is about catfishing and basically this Keegan Klein, it looked to me like he was telling a lot of information about his dad. So, so what if he was talking about that publicly? There's no telling what he has talked about to the police. And of course, now I'm not going to believe any of this is valid for any reason until I see an arrest. Because I've seen so many little things come up with this case over the years that I don't know what's what. I mean, this to me, it, this thing seems like either one of the most bumbled cases ever or the most high-tech cat-and-mouse stuff you've ever seen. I mean, that's what I'm reading from it. But I don't know. I mean, I mean, he throws his dad under the bus a couple of times. He's like, yeah, well, he could have had it. Of course, he also said that he he gave him an alibi that day. And then, of course, but it was kind of a very soft alibi it wasn't a hard alibi and it makes me wonder if maybe keegan got word that his that tony his dad had <laughs> not been so uh you know so good to him maybe and he was like you know well i get him he was with me all day him in a couple weeks so it seems like the the police had got between those two and they're telling on each other at least to some degree now, I don't know what that means. I don't know if that's tied to Delphi. These two are just trying to get their asses out of trouble or trying to get some attention or whatever. I mean, it's sick shit, you know. And, of course, another part of me is, like, thinking this could be all cop stuff. They're just releasing this so they can get the real killer to say, these, these dumb fuckers didn't do this. I did, you know. I don't know what's going on here. What do you think? What are you reading from all this? Well, I mean, it, it, it... The, the son's already in jail for, you know, child pornography and that kind of thing. <clears throat> and, you know, the dad could still be connected. 
you know, you don't know if you could trust anything he told uh, the, the interviewer because, I mean, as long as you can create reasonable doubt. Well, my dad had access to it just as good as I did. So you created, uh, you know, a reasonable doubt about the catfishing and the child pornography, which is what he's currently logged up for. They could be totally di- separate cases. He could be guilty of talking to Libby, just like the police are accusing him. And maybe his dad had something to do with catfishing and just not with them. And it'd be a totally separate incident from the bridge guy type thing, you know, and that could be some overlap that we see. And again, now that's speculation, but it is a possibility. Uh, you know, him throwing his dad under the bus and stuff, again, I think that maybe just uh, trying to create some reasonable doubt. It sounds like a lawyer tactic to me. Deny, deny, deny. Well, you know, why, you know, she made a comment about he's never, what was on the search warrant? Oh, I've never seen it. Well, I don't know if the man's seen it or not. You know, he says he hadn't. Uh, you know, again, legal tactic. <laughs> so I don't know how well we can even trust what he said. But I do see that if they did it together, if they truly were the young guy and the bridge guy, they worked together in some shape, form, or fashion. You know, they seem to be the type of individuals that would do it, <laughs> you know. But uh, I don't know. It just sounds like a big competition with each other. Man, this thing, that's right. I mean, I, I, mean, I can't even imagine. Uh, that's a weird relationship <laughs> with your father. Yes, that's big a, time. I mean, that's either way, that's some weird shit. Uh, and to me, you know, I'm I'm going another direction with this. I I don't I think I almost think all this is a diversion for some reason, because they've also said that this guy is a a, a great person in town, or he comes from a good family, and how is he going to live with himself and all this kind of business. I mean, I'm just I'm just trying to go back to what the police are saying. The police didn't release this officially. They, you know, I don't even know what that means. You know, it's, it's, it it was released, and it looks official, and it did apparently come from an official site. So apparently this is part of the quote-unquote narrative that's going on right now. Now, I don't know if that's just the outside narrative. You know, I've heard a lot of people say that they're just cleaning up the pedophiles from the region, you know, using this as a, as a way to help clean up some of that stuff that goes on. And that, you know, that there's – that the – the case is maybe a 100% other direction, and the pedophiles are just all telling on each other, trying to get their ass out of trouble and talking about this, and none of them know what the hell's going on. I mean, you see people all the time confessing to stuff, especially if they get put in a hot box, and they're like, hey, man, I'm going to throw it off on somebody else. So, I mean, you see that stuff in these court cases all the time. People just, you know, telling them, you don't never know. That's, that's why. There's like a million different ways to put someone somewhere at a place at a time to kill somebody. And then usually, if you look at these cases, it's like, uh, take somebody off the grid, <laughs> you know. But now I've been looking at this bridge guy, and I've been looking at what they released. And I went back and I and I, I saw a video with the guy that made the current sketch of Young Bridge Guy, and I just spent time with that, and listened to the interview on it. And this guy, he's he, he it's that's not his field of study, but he got involved in it uh, several years ago, probably 15 years ago. But at, at the time of Delphi, so 20 years ago, and he just was, um, I think he had drawn 72 sketches, and it was remarkably close on a lot of them. He would just, what he would do is, is that his, pro- is, his process is, that is, he would spend four or five hours just visiting with someone to get an idea of how they explain things, how they viewed the world. And then, you know, asking him questions and trying to figure out more. He, so he'd spent a lot of time. He'd just sit down and say, okay. Yeah. So, I mean, he spent time with them, and then he put them in there with the FBI list to look at concepts of faces. And so he spent time with this. You know, he, and, and he, for this Delphi, they made multiple uh, sketches. But now they've settled on this one. It's a young guy. A looks young guy. And they say he, he's between 18 and 40 but looks, he may he may ha- may just be older and have a youthful appearance. So I've been playing this week with that because that's that's what you know is true or what they say. That's who they say they're looking for. And this other thing is a leap from the bat. Again, it could be diversionary. It could be something that's the most important thing. They may be letting everybody know that they're about to make an arrest and they're gonna they're gonna do it. But they've not done that yet. Meanwhile, we're still looking for a bridge guy. And bridge guy, you know. 
is, you know, I, my observation for the week with him was I was there watching it. And of course, you know, I threw this idea by you. And it, it doesn't really mean anything necessarily. And it, and it doesn't have to be true, but it was just an observation I made about the way it looked like his pants fit. Now, I had a previous theory on this was that he had to get some pants that were too big for him because he's a hiker kind of guy. Of course, you know, my, my view of this guy has changed a hundred times. But if, if this if this current sketch that they say, this young bridge guy, you know, um, uh, and he's doing what I think he's doing, which is wearing overalls, that may help identify him. That's my big reveal. I think he's wearing some type of a bib overall up under this, this clothing he has on. I don't know what that is oh. about a person. You know, I don't know, but it's just a theory. It's just nice. It's a not a theory. It's a before that. It's a uh, what's that called? You remember what that's called? It's a speculation. Well, <laughs> well it's, it's a perce- it's a perception. I mean, we, we were talking about live experiences, you know, shape perceptions, and so you've worn yeah, bib overalls. Hey. You've seen your grandfather, your your dad, somebody wearing them, and so him seeing that motion has triggered that thing to where it. I can see see that in the video. You know, as it, you know that. Yeah, I could see that being overalls because that would compensate for uh, the bulges that you know you're, that looks like is under his jacket. You know, something's tucked in between that bib and the jacket type thing. I could see, you know, that's speculation. If no one had thought of it, it could trigger something for somebody else. So I'm with you. Well, the sides of overalls, what I know about them is that they open up, and uh, you can you can carry stuff down your legs. I put a BB gun down my leg and carried it. <laughs> I got it. I had, yeah. When I was a kid, I used to wear overalls all the time. You know, it was a very convenient because Papa did. You know, right. and, uh, you know, I, and of course, you know, whatever Papa did is what I tried to do. You know, so but now going back to this guy, see, it looks it, to me, it just it rides on him like that, but it's not significant, I don't think. Other than that, if someone's oh yeah, I know a guy who looks something like that, except for he's got whatever, you know, different. Uh, but anyway, so the one I'm looking at, I put this guy on a bridge, and I put some overalls behind it, and I've got this blue jacket with a little head, uh, with a little uh, with a camouflage hat on, and a little scarf thing around his neck. I don't know what that scarf thing is yet. I just got something there to hide the bottom of his chin. So I've been looking at that, and of course, I don't see, I don't see. If you just show me this young bridge guy. The actual one that the police are saying to look for, I don't yeah. see. I don't now the old bridge guy, you know, and it could be that later they're melding the two. I mean, they've given all kinds of weird shit to go along with spec. The cops have, you know, the law enforcement has. But if you use what they're saying they're using and put a hat on him and a jacket and some stuff like that, I mean. That that changes things. And if you look at those, again, if you look at that video and you break it down by frame, those 48 frames, and you look at 44, 45, 46, and 47, you can see a, a younger person with what I call, we call around here, you know, it's Irish hair, it's red hair, but it's really kind of orange, it's brown, it's a deeper, it's just not just a fiery red, but it's like a... Uh, it's got the same composition as, as a dark brown hair, but it's more red looking, more orange looking. So, you know, um, so that's what I see with it right there on a, when that sun's shining. But then again, as you and I were discussing, when you got sun and shadow and a grainy picture, colors, you know, even color in a in a shadow has has a it has a color. It may be different than what it is in reality. So, I mean, that jacket could be black for all we know. It could be shining. There could be blue mixed in with some of the, you know, reflected light from it. Who knows? But, I, 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 you know, just for me, he looks like he's got that red hair we talked about. And it looks like he's, it does look like he's younger than me. But then there's other times in those other 37 frames that he looks older, but the shadows are just so bad and the blur is so bad. I, I just can't see a face until you get down there to 44, 45, 46, 47. And, I, and that's where I see the younger bridge guy. Although I can't make out his face because he's, it's like she's standing taller than him. Like she's standing on the side there. That gives her another five or six inches taller. You know, and she's pretty tall. I think that Libby was about five seven. So if they say he's five six, that would make sense too. That you couldn't really see up at his face. You were looking down at his face. 
So I don't know. I'm just I, I and, 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 and either way it goes, I don't see Keegan or his dad walking on that bridge. Not I don't. No, I but, I don't either. That's why I made it. Uh, I don't really see them being it, you know. Again, because uh, you know, in, in that murder sheet, they described him describing his father and how he was abusive and stuff. But he never, he, he never like uh, portrayed him as a sadistic type, uh, you know, type thing. He was just abusive, and and I'm I'm sure he was violent, but violent and sadistic, you know, different things. And I just don't see them being able to. Honestly, in the child porn, being being able to have the the gall and the balls big enough to approach two girls and try to order them to go down the hill. I mean, I just don't see they have now, that type to do it. Didn't Dad go supposedly ahead. have sex with one of his friends, like a seventeen year old girl or something? Did you? I remember hearing that part of it. I don't know. Did you hear that part or no? Uh, no, I don't remember hearing that part, and I haven't finished reading through it either yet. So I know well, he did say, you know, his dad was using this using a lot of his, his same electronics and so he could have been catfishing pretending to be his son well, who knows yeah and I think it, I think he says that he's his only son but I man, who knows I mean that's, a, that's just weird I, I mean everything about that whole thing is weird because he was yeah and his again dad had sex with one of his friends a 16 or 17 year old girl I mean, he, that's throwing his dad on the bus right there, I think, unless it's not legal, illegal, but it's wrong either way, you know. Well, it, it could be wrong to throw your dad on the bus like that, but when you're looking at the charges that he may be facing, he may be totally willing to, He, you know, I, I mean, if you're into child porn, I mean, you're already uh, a pretty sorry individual. So what's the next sorry thing? Throw your kid under the bus. I mean, you know, you got to think, Brad, that's more of a uh, <laughs> southern thing in a lot of places, you know, in that place. Hey, they might be competing for the same catfishing stuff. We don't know their psychology or their mental break or whatever gets their foot to itching. It's, you know, we can't understand it because we ain't built like that. Thank goodness. Yeah, uh, I mean that, that, you know, but he that, could. That, that but, but I, I mean, I could still be you know thinking that could have been leaked for the simple point of the, the reasonable doubt. Throw your dad under the bus. To create, look, I ain't necessarily the one that could have been doing this. My dad could have been doing this child porn, not me. You know, I haven't, again, read the, the thing of it deep enough to know all the charges that they actually, what they caught him with, you know, that he's trying to argue, you know. So I don't know all them details, just the release that supposedly his dad had been his best buddy talking to him until about two weeks ago. And that's when, uh, you know, this interviewer said apparently, you know, he was raided, you know, uh, the, you know, Keegan said he didn't know anything about it, but he did say that his father suddenly just has quit talking to him and sent him any money or stuff. So, I mean, there's a possibility he's just detained for some reason, you know. And again, could all be just smoke and mirrors. That's right. He, that's right. He could be detained, and we just, they just not they're just going through the process of working through lawyers and whatever else to get all the papers written up. But I just, I just don't, I don't know how, and you know. Uh, this, I'm, talk, I'm, talk, I'm still trying to tie back to Bridge Guy here. I know we got to be closing down pretty quick because we're getting close to our 20 minute mark. And God, I, I could go all day about it. I think we've already talked for an hour and a half on it. But, uh, but back to this Bridge Guy here, though. I just still, I just don't see if that person they say that young Bridge Guy is who they're looking for. I just don't think that Keegan, unless they are some kind of an associate, you know, going on. It just seems to me like that there's there's this, you know, I don't know, this child porn thing. You mentioned it. You know, I don't know. That's a weird subculture. Uh, and I, like you said, I'm glad I don't understand it. And I don't know. I don't know. I, I hear talk about it all the time. And I'm just, I just, I mean, I just, I just, I just can't even believe that that's something. You know, just. Like I, yeah, I can't make that, that, you know, I can't make that mental connection, but that, that leap to. It, it, I just don't fucking get it. I, no, sorry. <laughs> no, no, I, I, nope. I, that's my sentiment as well. I mean, that's just the weird yeah. shit. So I, 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 maybe, maybe it's just hard for me to comprehend it. But in, in my mind, though, I don't think Bridge Guy has to be a pedophile to do what he did. I don't oh, know. Oh no, what he no. Did. But no. So, so uh, I, I, that's why I wonder. I wonder if all this is just extremely diversionary. It could be, yeah. 
He could just be, hey, they're a POI because they kind of fit the folks creepy enough and crazy enough or whatever enough to do it and not even, you know, connected. That's, that was why I was making the point of they could be just as guilty as sin of what they're being accused of and have nothing at all to do with, you know, uh, the murders just because they're in the same, you know, or close enough to be the same town, you know. But it's still interesting to go, well, are they? You know, but I don't think they are. I'm with, I, you know, on that kind of thing. Well, I mean, it, 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 tell you what, it just brings more publicity about the case. And, and, you know, and, of course, the more people see Bridge Guy, I mean, their version of Bridge Guy, and, you, and this newest one here, if you look at Bridge Guy there, and I put a hat on him and some hair that was different because I didn't like the way they did the hair. But, of course, I've, I've listened to the guy that made the thing, and he did it. He's, he's very good. But, no, there is sometimes some difference in the way you draw something and the way something looks. Okay. So, yeah. um, if, if that's who it is, then, you know, I, I, I hope that pushing this out there, and, and, and I, hope that, I hope that people don't think it's solved yet because there have not been an arrest made. You know, we've not heard no. of any kind of arrest. They're going down this 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 path with this catfishing thing with these Keegan and his Tony Klein or whatever. I don't know how well it's tied to the case, but at least in some way they think it is, or at least they're using it as a way to help with the case. This is some strange right. shit, man. I don't know. I, I I just think there's some major cat and mouse shit going on here with uh, the FBI, the ISP. Delphi and Carroll County. I mean, I just and they some people even say there's marshal service. And there's a guy that commented on our uh, one of our videos that said that he's seen the marshal service involved there. And of course, that could mean there's interstate, and that really could tie some of the sexual stuff together. You know, just child sex. Oh yeah. So I don't know. I don't know. This is some weird shit. Uh, it's crazy, but hey, it was released. Believe it or not, it's uh, new information for new speculation. Anybody who's interested in it. They, you know, they need to at least read it over, make their own informed decision based on what they think, hear, and see. <laughs> you know, but the, you're right. The more you get it out there, the more people that might click on something. If it hasn't been solved, I would love it to be solved, but I don't expect it has been yet. But anyway, bud, no, hey, I'm gonna let you go. So. Yes, sir. Have a good time. All right, all right, bud.